Hey, Facebook Live peeps, this is Seth Green here, and I am currently participating in the One Funnel Away Challenge um, from with Russell Brunson and Steven Larson, my good friends over at ClickFunnels. And I was reviewing my daily assignment today, and I wasn't allowed to do it because I did not publish my origin story yesterday. And I was on a plane all day yesterday, um, so I couldn't, I did not publish it, so I'm doing it now. So, my origin story. When I was about eight or nine years old, my parents, we moved, my family moved. We lived in Ithaca, New York, and my dad was a journalist and worked for the Ithaca Journal, and there wasn't that much opportunity there, and he got a better job with the Buffalo News, and the Buff Buffalo happened to be the city where my mom was from, so we, at least this is how I remember it. They may correct me. Um, so she had, we moved back to her hometown, moved to her hometown, and she and my dad got a better job. And the neighborhood we lived in in Amherst, I was getting bullied. Um, there was a kid on our street um, who was a couple of years older than me and outweighed me by at least probably 100 pounds. And um, he made my life miserable. I had been picked on at some other schools before I got, we switched schools a number of times. Um, trying to find one where I could be, you know, happy as opposed to keep running into these issues. But anyway, um, he was, um, I was getting picked on and at the same, and it was not pleasant at all. And at the same time, I learned, I was doing a project in middle school on Egypt. It was a research project. We were learning about other countries. And I learned that Seth was the name Set actually is the name of the Egyptian god of death and kind of freaked me out. And I went, I started researching and learning about the occult and, you know, witches and wizards and people who were doing, um, had powers. And I thought that maybe if any of that was real, if I could learn some of it, then I could stop this kid from hurting me. Um, so uh, my mom came home one day to find me in the center of a charcoal pentagram with candles all around, um, you know, asked what the hell heck I was doing. I was trying to summon Satan because I figured there are all these lesser demons and gods and deities in all of these books, but why not start at the top, right? And I, and, and I told her I was trying to summon Satan and she said, well, you know, you know, being a Jewish mother, her response, you know, was, well, can you go do it in the basement on the charcoal floor that I can wash easily? Because, um, you know, she didn't want charcoal on a rug. Apparently not that easy to get out. Um, so shortly thereafter, um, my, my parents realized I, I was being kind of obsessed. Um, my dad tried to redirect that energy and he tried, um, he bought me a deck of tarot cards for my birthday. And so they were gonna help me tell the future and prevent me from you know, summoning, summoning demons into our duplex. So, um, but I didn't know how to read the tarot cards. I didn't know how to tell the future. So I went to um, my grand, we were visiting my grandmother's house, um, Sunday dinner, and there's a magic store. There was a man, she li used to live on Knowlton, my late grandmother, and there was a magic store called It's Magic, um, literally a block away which was, so I walked there to go buy a book on how to read tarot cards. And the man behind the counter, who's been a friend for 30 some years, um, now Paul Richards, who worked there at the time and then owned it, um, his, um, he was demonstrating magic trick. And I forgot all about the tarot cards. I fell in love with magic and said, I wanna learn how to do that, which I did. And I became a professional, I became a magician starting with one trick and then growing up to become a professional magician and performer and performing at birthday parties and schools and stuff like that. Now, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to uh, my freshman year at Syracuse University. You know, Syracuse was my number one dream school. Um, it had a top 25 business school. It had a top three drama school in the country. And it was close enough that I could get home without needing a plane ticket in a couple hours, and it was far enough away that my parents weren't just gonna drop by and say hi and surprise me. So it had everything I wanted, and I, I think I applied, applied to like six, six schools, got into Syracuse, um, my SAT scores were good enough, my audition for the drama department was good enough to get a drama, partial drama scholarship, and it worked. And when I got in, I was thrilled, my mom was thrilled, my dad was like, how the heck am I gonna pay for this? Because Syracuse is 
was really expensive back then. It's gotten a lot more expensive since then. So um, somehow I end up getting to go and then I'm loving it. I'm having the time of my life. I'm learning what I want to learn. And then the first semester, um, my dad calls me and it's like, you know, I've got some bad news. I don't think we can afford it. I think you're going to have to come home and transfer to UB. And, you know, freaks me out. I call my mother crying. Going, I don't want to come home. I don't want to come home. And she says, you don't, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. Don't, your father got the tuition bill or whatever. He's stressing out. We'll figure it out. So we figure, so I get to stay another semester. Same thing happens. So after th- a couple semesters, it becomes a pattern. Every semester my dad gets a bill. He freaks out. Um, tells me I got to come home and my mother says, we'll figure it out. And they figure it out. He ended up, my dad, wonderful, got a second job, um, to help pay and keep me at Syracuse and pursue another dream he had. So I decide that no other, I don't want other kids to have to go through this. And I decide I don't want to go to New York city and starve as an actor. Um, and I was minoring, getting another, I was also studying business because my parents are smart and said, you need to have a backup plan in case you don't want to be a waiter. So I decided other kids shouldn't have to go through what I went through. And I became a financial planner to help other families avoid the financial trauma of college. Um, So I come back to Buffalo, I get a job as a financial planner, uh, but I got no clients. And my branch manager says, you know, I grew up cold calling widows and orphans, selling them AT&T stock. It was good enough for me. It should be good enough for you. So that's what you should do. You should, here's the phone book. Go get them. And that, if you've ever cold called, you know how much it sucks. I was still doing magic pretty much for fun. Um, I would do a show here and there, um, but it was pretty much for fun at this point. And I was reading a magic trade journal and I saw a full page ad by a guy named Dave D offering a marketing course for magicians. You know, you can make an executive level income as a magician. I didn't have the money to buy the course because I'm cold calling and I'm not making any money. So I asked my parents to spend more than they normally did on my birthday present and buy me the course, which they did. I asked them, I said, can you combine my birthday and Hanukkah and everything else and make this my one present like for the year, which they were nice enough to do. So I implemented the course, what I learned, and I instantly became like one of the busiest, most expensive magicians in Western New York at the time. So it worked really, really well. I asked, I got my critique certificate. I got to get on the phone with Dave D. I said, where'd you learn it? He said, Dan Kennedy, the two words that changed my life. And I said, would this work in my real job as a financial planner? He said, absolutely. So I started buying Dan Kennedy books and tapes and products and courses. And I said, I got to be on a call with Dan. And I said, you know, it's okay to be a 21 year, you know, 20 year old magician doing shows for 10 year olds. It's cute. Um, but when I go try and meet with baby boomers about their money, um, it's not so cute that I'm, you know, in my twenties and they think I'm just a kid and they don't see me as an expert. What do I do? And he said, write a book. I said, what am I going to write a book about? I'm brand new. I don't know anything yet. And I was reading one of my homework assignments he gave me was to read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is one of the best books of all time. If you haven't read it, I'm reading Napoleon Hill and I'm realizing it's an interview book. Napoleon Hill, thanks to Andrew Carnegie, went and interviewed 500 of the most successful people of his time and then wrote a book about what he learned. I said, I I can interview people. I can ask them what they know and write about it. Um, So I wrote my very first book. Um, It was an interview book and got it printed and hardcover design looks looks beautiful. And at the time, I was meeting with a local construction union that I had called called to try and get in as one of their, as a financial planner managing their union pension fund, you know, shoot for the top, right? Shoot for big money. And it must have been, it, it appears that every couple of years, um, the union has to put out the contract for financial advice out to bid and any financial advisor who knows about it or gets in can pitch. So it was pitch day. So I'm sitting in the lobby and I'm the last guy. And I walk in and there's seven business cards lined up on the table of all the other advisors who have pitched before me from every firm in town. And I put them all up in a little pile. I ripped them in half. I threw them out and I said, board of trustees, you don't need these anymore. And I dropped my book on the table and hardcover makes a little thud, it's thick. And I slid copies to every single one of the, uh, down the table to every single member of the board of trustees and I gave my presentation. And then they asked me to sit outside because I was the last one. So I sat outside, pins and needles, sweating bullets, oh my God, 
you know, 10, 15 minutes, they call me back in and everyone else had left and they were going to find out tomorrow. And they call me back in and they say, listen, um, half, we had the hardest conversation about you. Half of the room wanted to throw you out because you're a cocky, arrogant kid and you ripped up all those business cards and that was very disrespectful. The other half wanted to give you the business because you're the only one who wrote a book. Everyone else brought a business card. You brought a book. Um, and you know, one of our board members wanted to punch you out because he thought you were a snot nosed punk. And I said, which half of the room won? And he said, you got the business uh, because of the book. And you're the expert because you wrote the book. And I said, hallelujah. And I got, I was a hero. I got written about in the company newsletter. There were 6,700 advisors at our company. I got written about in the company newsletter. They're trotting me out as this example. And um, other advisors in the company called and said, hey, how'd you do it? I want to do that. And so I wrote another book about that market, the book process and financial advisor marketing and other campaigns I had created learning from and working with Dan Kennedy. And then all of a sudden I got written about in a couple trade journals in our industry and my phone started ringing. This is way before the internet. Um, and my phone started ringing up advisors saying, I want to do what you did. How do I do that? And I asked Dan, what do I do? And he said, start a marketing company and help them. And that was Market Domination LLC that we started, I started back in 11 years ago. And along the way, because it worked, I kept writing more books. I've written a total of seven. Every time I wrote a book, it got us more business. Every time I wrote a book, it got more people sending me more business, more referral partners to the point where we now have 72, you know, registered affiliates of our company who promote it for us. And then advisors kept saying, I want a book. I want to do that process. So a number of years ago, we started offering that process to advisors where we would get them interviews with, let's say, accountants and attorneys and whoever else they wanted and turn it into a book and publish and market the book. And it's worked. So it worked for me and it worked for them. We had an uh, advisor who's since become a good friend, Roger, um, who, whose book came out a couple weeks ago, literally uh, hit number one on Amazon for retirement planning. Um, at his book launch party, you know, there were a hundred people there. Um, he's building the rest of his business life, his practice life off of that book. And, um, we're publishing five to 10 a month, um, because it works so well. So it worked for me, worked for, worked for them, can work for you too. You don't have to be a financial advisor to do it. Um, we have now elevated that process. The next version of it that we're about to come out with is called our dream 50 program where over 12 months, um, my multiple Emmy award winning team will make you so recognizable in your niche, in your industry that you literally won't recognize your business. It'll transform your business because there will be a book, there will be a po audio podcast, there will be a video podcast, there will be daily social media created for you. There will be um, direct mail three times a month. Um, so basically taking the book concept, the team book concept, putting it on steroids, with your top 50 ideal referral partners or clients to totally dominate your market in less than 12 months. So that, uh, Russell Brunson, I have now done my homework. That is my origin story. Uh, folks, comment, Tom, Courtney, come, thanks for joining me at this early hour of the morning. I am actually at a mastermind right now um, in another, in Austin, Texas, and I'm on East Coast time, so I'm up early, so I went to watch my mission four and I couldn't, he said, stop and go publish your origin story. So Russell, here's my origin story. Stephen Larson, here's my origin story. Um, thanks so much.